snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Harrison Ford has played Indiana Jones in four feature films, with a fifth on the way. Starting with Raiders of the Lost Ark, Ford propelled the lovable archaeologist for hire into being one of cinema's greatest icons. However, most people have forgotten that Ford also played the sarcastic Dr. Jones on the small screen in the often forgotten Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Before we get too deep into today's episode, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to Nerdstalgic for more videos just like this. The episode in question, titled Young Indiana Jones and the Mystery of the Blues, aired on March 13, 1993. In it, we see Harrison Ford in all his glory being the same indie we all love from the films, only this time with a little more saxophone playing. Yes, that's right. This specific episode centers around young Indy's time in Chicago, where he worked at a jazz club and got embroiled into a murder mystery. However, the wraparound narrative for the episode shows Indiana Jones in his 50s, sporting a beard and hiding out with his good friend Grey Cloud. In case you're unfamiliar, the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles usually has the same format every week. There would be an adventure from Indy's past where he would meet a historical figure, go on a quest, and globetrot. There would also be wraparound segments told from the perspective of an older Jones in the future. These segments featured an elderly version of the Doctor played by George Hall sporting an eye patch. These wraparounds aren't exactly high quality cinema, they're the aspects of the show that have aged the worst. They feature one-eyed Indy getting his arms stuck in a mailbox, doing physical comedy while giving college lectures, and being obsessed with soap operas. Ralph is Mars lover, or... Her twin brother. But for this episode, the season two opener, they wanted to kick things off with a bang. So George Lucas called in a favor and got his old buddy Harrison Ford to reprise the role. The wraparound for Mystery of the Blues shows Indy helping Grey Cloud rescue a sacred peace pipe from nefarious collectors. The episode opens with them in a quintessential Indiana Jones chase sequence barreling through snow-covered roads after having just wrestled the pipe from the evildoer's clutches. After losing their pursuers in a snowbank accident, Jones and Grey Cloud take refuge in a small cabin, where they hole up and wait for a snowstorm to pass by. While there, Indy finds a dusty old saxophone, begins playing it, and regales Grey Cloud of a tale from his youth. Reminds me of working my way through the University of Chicago. You plan that? No. No, I was a waiter. You'll notice that this is the only on-screen time that Indy sports a full beard. That's because this was shot while filming the latter parts of his iconic turn as Dr. Kimball in The Fugitive. In fact, his whole segment was actually shot in Wyoming near his property in one day in order to make it feasible. The finale of the episode rejoins Jones in the cabin where he is seemingly bested by the gangsters in search of the pipe, only to have a final victory by playing a high-pitched C-flat which causes snow to fall off a nearby tree and knock out the villainous duo. This might sound like a wacky premise for a wraparound segment on a TV show from the 90s, but this is George Lucas we're talking about. He had the ability to make just about anything happen. And after the initial Star Wars and Indiana Jones trilogies wrapped up, he turned his attention to making a TV show specifically an educational TV show. Yes, that's right, the original idea for Young Indy was that it would be an educational program that would teach children about global history. This version of the show was going to be called A Walk Through the 20th Century, History with Indiana Jones. However, this idea was eventually evolved into a show that would feature educational cameos from historical figures while primarily being an action and adventure show called The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Don't get used to that name. It's gonna change frequently. No one loves telling weird, complicated, and unnecessary backstories more than George Lucas. And after ABC agreed to air the show, Lucas and his supremely talented writing staff set about building just that. Frank Darabont, future director of Shawshank Redemption, British novelist Rosemary Ann Sisson, and famed script doctor and space princess Carrie Fisher began helping Lucas and his newfound producing partner, Rick McCallum, build the architecture for this world. Lucas wanted to connect Indy to every important historical figure to walk through the Earth during the 20th century, much like many of the pulp characters that had inspired Indy's creation. Three actors aside from Ford would play the character over the course of the show's three-season run. Depicting Indy from the ages of 8 to 10 would be Corey Carrier. It really is a race to the bottom whenever it's an 8-year-old Indy episode with bookends of slapstick grandpa Indy. 
No one wants to see eight-year-old Indiana Jones meeting famous artists and learning how to paint, but they equally don't want to see him being a senile old man and being threatened to be put in an old folks home. We are here for swashbuckling and treasure hunting, aren't we? Sean Patrick Flannery would play the character from ages 16 to 21. He's the beating heart of the show and helps to hold things together even when the scripts aren't exactly all there. Not very many people forget their birthday, monsieur. Defense? You're the worst liar I've ever met. And finally, George Hall, the previously mentioned eyepatch sporting actor. The majority of the episodes feature the young Indy getting into a scrape or mystery with some historical figure or witnessing some historical event. Although it's intended to be educational, the show feels more like Indiana Jones fan fiction. The entire production, while visually impressive for the time, has an air of Look at George Lucas tick boxes on his Indiana Jones Wikipedia article, which is really a shame because the idea of a young indie show is a great concept and a character that could actually service a high concept like globe-trotting teenager interacts with historical events. Ultimately, the show ran for two seasons on ABC and was canceled. Then, in order to wrap up the remaining narrative ground to get Indy to 21 years old, Lucas struck a deal with Fox Family to air the remaining unaired four episodes of season two and four made-for-TV films. The hope was that this last go at things would generate enough fan interest to give the project some serious legs. However, that didn't happen. As the young Indiana Jones Chronicles faded from cultural memory, George Lucas's urge to tinker with the show grew. In 1996, Lucas chose to transform these three seasons of TV into 23 feature films, each one roughly an hour and a half long. Most of these films were composed of two episodes of the show edited together in order to try and make a single story. Some of these work, and some very much don't. He also made the choice to reorder the stories in purely chronological order, and to completely remove the old Indiana Jones bookends, which is honestly for the best. If you'll apologize to the nice lady, right now I'll reconsider turning your head into a sausage pizza. The made-for-TV movies were retitled initially as The Adventures of Indiana Jones as a Young Man, and then changed to The Adventures of Young Indiana Jones. This version of the show would be aired on the USA Network and BBC One throughout the remainder of the 90s. In some ways, the show was the harbinger of what would become of other George Lucas properties. Star Wars Special Editions, the remaster of TH-1138, and even the process by which the prequels are made. It all flows right back to Young Indiana Jones. Lucas's overemphasis on detailed backstories that don't serve to deepen or expand the characters, the constant desire to re-edit, reconfigure, and second-guess creative decisions, and an obsession with the childhood version of beloved characters. It's all here in stark relief. Would a show that was a literal educational program starring Indiana Jones have been good? No, no, probably not, but at least it would have been graded accordingly. The show, whether you're talking about Young Indiana Jones Chronicles or The Adventures of Young Indiana Jones films, brims with potential, and it has production value by the truckload. The problem, aside from tonally inconsistent elements, is the fact that it's not in service of something. There's not a bigger arc that Indy is going through over the course of the episodes. It's just one and done episodes, which were admittedly the style of the time, but they don't seem to knit together into anything that's substantial. The fact is, the show and the film series are so close to being great, and yet, so far. As evidenced by the fact that even Harrison Ford with a badass beard couldn't really save it. Well, that's all we have for this episode, but what do you think? Are there more weird Indiana Jones appearances that need to be exhumed? What about Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis? Or those bizarre Marvel Indiana Jones comics from the 80s? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, please like and subscribe to Nerdstalgic for more videos just like this one.